Roll out the red carpet and get your acceptance speech because we have your backstage pass to Hollywood. Backstage pass starts now. In five, four, three, two. This are, are you, you ready? ready? Did you see? <laughs> I can't. We're coming up on camera two. And then you say later on, and then we're sticking the camera one. everyone and welcome to season 24 of Backstage Pass, where we give you the scoop on all things entertainment. I'm Hannah Bolkowski. And I'm Eric Valenti. Alas, summer has ended and school has begun. Did, did you just say alas, dork? In other news, we are recapping all things entertainment from summer 2022. We're talking music, movies, celebrity drama, and we even have a special summer trivia segment later on. This summer had lots of albums come out, including Lizzo's Special, Beyonce's Renaissance, Harry Styles' As It Was, and Post Malone's 12 Carat Toothache. Now, I have some opinions about Lizzo's and Beyonce's albums. Neither of them truly blew me away, but I do think they both had some really good songs. Let's start with Special. The songs I enjoyed the most were About Damn Time, Naked, and If You Love Me. While some diehard fans weren't all that impressed with the overall album, I think Lizzo really has some songs that get you moving and help bring out your confidence. When creating her album, Lizzo actually wrote about 170 songs, and from this long list, she chose the top 12 that she thought were the best. I think there's a song for everyone here, and if you haven't checked out Special yet, you definitely should. Overall, I'm giving Lizzo a 9 out of 10. I'm not a big fan of Lizzo, but I think as a casual listener, she really brought her all for this one. As for Queen Bee, the album was not my favorite from her, but I do appreciate that she did something unique. Beyonce's album has inspiration from ballroom music. Not like classical ballroom, waltzing, but drag queen ballroom, like voguing. She also dedicates the album and certain songs make mention of her late uncle. I think it's really sweet that she did that for him and it adds something personal to Re Renaissance. I highly recommend listening to the album in the order that it appears in. Each song leads into the next, and it's more impactful if you listen in the way the artist intends. I personally don't like to listen to a full album for my day to day, but I made sure to listen to the album this way the first time. The track I enjoyed the most was Virgo's Groove. This is my personal preference because I don't typically listen to party or house music when I'm commuting, so the album just didn't do it for me. I think there's no denying the album is great, but I think Beyonce has done better in the past with albums like Lemonade. Overall, Renaissance is getting a 7 out of 10. It's meaningful and gets you moving, but it just felt like it was lacking with some songs. One last thing about summer music, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Harry Styles' massive takeover of the Billboard charts with his song, As It Was. He was dominating the charts at the beginning of the summer until our girl Lizzo took over with About Damn Time. Harry did celebrate Lizzo by sending her flowers. As a Harry Styles fan, I would simply pass away if I received flowers from him. But enough of Mr. Styles, for now. It's time to talk movies and TV. Since streaming services have dominated the entertainment world, all new shows are spread out among the various streaming platforms. The good news is, you can always share your passwords with your friends. But PSA, change your password if your ex is still using it. The first streaming service that released some new shows this summer was Disney+. Plus. First, Star Wars fans were pretty excited to hear that the show Obi-Wan Kenobi was coming out in June. This show is set 10 years after Star Wars Revenge of the Sith and has Ewan McGregor back and better than ever. Also new on Disney+, Plus was She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, which follows the life of an attorney, duh, named Jennifer Walters as she becomes She-Hulk. One of the most anticipated shows of the summer 
was a Netflix original whose soundtrack took over social media and radio stations everywhere. I'm talking about Stranger Things Season 4. This season was by far the most graphic and gory, but that's also coming from someone who faints at the sight of blood. But one show that I know for a fact is graphic was the new Game of Thrones prequel on HBO Max called House of Dragon. I've never seen Game of Thrones, but I can appreciate the fantasy genre. A similar theme show was recently released on Prime Video and is also a prequel. This would be the Lord of the Rings show, The Rings of Power. This show was around 100 to 150 million dollars to produce, and after a few seasons, the show is estimated to be about 1 billion dollars, which would make it the most expensive show ever made. The show looks amazing, and I can see why it's so expensive. There are new episodes out every Friday, so make sure you check it out. In terms of movies, the box office hit a high with the release of Top Gun Maverick, which is now number five in highest grossing movies in history. The film follows Pete Mitchell, a.k.a. Maverick, as he trains a younger generation of Top Gun graduates, one being his old friend Goose's son, Rooster, played by Miles Teller. I was quite literally blown away watching this film. The fact that some scenes were filmed while in the air amazes me, and it looks so good on the big screen. Another popular film released this summer was Minions, The Rise of Gru. The movie follows a young Gru who has dreams to be a supervillain with the help of his minions. This leads to a rumble with the group of supervillains called the Vicious Six. The film had people, mostly teenage boys, attending the theaters in suits. I don't understand my generation, but I love us. Elvis, starring Austin Butler and Tom Hanks, got a 78% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and shows the rise to fame of the king of rock and roll. It emphasizes the complex relationship between Elvis and his manager, Tom Parker. The film is now on HBO Max, so if anyone wants to do a watch party, let me know. Everyone's favorite space ranger, Buzz Lightyear, got his own movie this summer. The film follows Buzz on a mission where he must learn that dream work, that teamwork makes the dream work. Fans of Toy Story also got to see the reveal of Zerg. While I loved the representation in the film Lightyear, I was really disappointed with the actual storyline. But it's okay, because there was a cute little robot cat named Socks in the movie, and he distracted me from the weak writing. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, do you, know, do you know where there's not weak writing? Backstage pass. Eric, that was a good one. <laughs> Anyways, there was a lot of celebrity news this past summer that we have to cover. That there was, especially about the Latina pop star Shakira, who claims her hips don't lie but her taxes do. If you haven't heard, over the summer, Shakira was facing a lot of controversy about her taxes. At this time, she's facing up to eight years in, pri in prison concerning an alleged 15.5 million tax fraud. Shakira wasn't the only one in the courts this summer. You may have heard of the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial. After the long and drawn out trial and many memes, in the end it was decided by the jury that Heard defamed Depp and awarded him $5 million in punitive damages and $10 million in compensation. They also awarded Heard $2 million in, compensa in compensation damages. That Depp guy really reminds me of Jack Sparrow. Anyways, we do have to bring the mood down for a minute to pay tribute to some losses this summer. On August 8th, Greece actress Dame Olivia Newton-John passed away. After a long battle with breast cancer, the Australian-British singer passed. She will always be our Sandra D. More recently, a few months after celebrating her jubilee, Queen Elizabeth II died on September 8th. She was the longest reigning Queen of England. Now, there is one more tragic loss that we must cover. Over the summer, the love between Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson died. After only nine months of dating, the couple called it quits. Let's be real though, who really thought they would last? Their PR teams tried, but in the end, failed. To end our tribute to summer 2022, we have another segment of Backstage Ass. We asked students some summer trivia questions on the quad, and we're gonna see how they did. And if you'd like, play along. back with Backstage Ass. I'm Eric Valenti. And I'm Hannah Bolkowski. We're asking the tough questions about this summer, all things arts and entertainment. Do you know the answer? 
We'll find out. <laughs> what is your name? My name is Aiden. I'm Julia. I'm Alyssa. Lauren. Ashley. I'm Colleen. I'm Maggie. Morgan. My name is Tejana. I'm Raina. Jen. Uh, Brendan Storino. Frankie Spinozzi. I'm Maya. I'm Tanika. My name's Elmore. Sydney. Uh, Vincent Thadon. I'm Isaiah. Are you ready for some summer trivia? Yes, I am. Perfect. Our first question. Don't cheat. Summer 2022 had lots and lots of movies come out. What was the highest grossing movie of the summer? Uh, the Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. Ooh, there's two in mine. Top Gun. Oh, I don't remember what it was called. The <laughs> Tom Cruise movie. Are you uh, an Elvis? It was definitely a Marvel movie. I could not tell you which one. Actually, you should have kind of off. Oh, Top Gun. Who? <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun. That is correct! Oh my gosh. Okay, wow. <laughs> yeah, and it was grossing at $700 million, which Kardashian had an Italian wedding this past summer. Oh my god, I'm so bad with the Kardashians. <laughs> like, this is embarrassing. Uh, I'm gonna say... Chloe. <laughs> I guess Chloe Kardashian? No. I know she married Travis. Okay, you know the drummer from Blink 182, because I really like Blink 182, but I can't remember which Kardashian it is. Uh, what is her name? It's the oldest. Would it be. Kendall? No, was it, was it, was it Kim? No, not no, Kim. Chloe. No, uh, uh, what's, what's that girl's name? Courtney. Courtney. They got that one too. Courtney. Oh, Courtney. 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 She knows her stuff. <laughs> <I can't>. Courtney. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Give them the point, folks. <laughs> Which award winning drama television show had a prequel released on August 21st? And what is it called? Shit's pretty <laughs> Game Freak. of Thrones. Is it Game of Thrones? That'd be Game of Thrones. It's Game of Thrones. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're gonna give that one like a quick answer. <laughs> I have no idea. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Game of Thrones. Ah, uh, the Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Okay, it's like three words, yeah. so it starts with G. Four. Oh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. It's a show about fire-breathing creatures. How to Train the Dragon. It's not How to Train the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Is it keeping up with the Kardashians? No. Oh, it's on HBO. That helps. Oh, um, the dragons. The one with yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's... whatever it is. House of Dragon. That was good. I'll give it to you. In Stranger Things season four, there's a song that the character Matt listens to to escape Batman. What is the song and who's the artist? I mean, it's like, if only for... It's called Running Up That Hill. And for some reason, I'm blanking on the name of the- I know, I know. Running up the hill, Kate Bush. Oh my She's God. good! I don't watch Stranger Things, so I have to take it. I watch it, but I don't know, so. <laughs> Running up hill, I think. Is that it? Yeah, it's Running Up That's that That's what hill. it's called? Running Up That Hill. Yes! <laughs> and do you know the artist? Kate something? I forgot the song, I did forget. I think it's like Kate, it's by Kate Bish? Mish? I, oh my goodness, I don't know the name. Running something. I don't, I don't. She's on the yeah, that's what it's like. <laughs> I don't know. Her Things. Okay, is it Running Up That Hill? Yes. I don't know the artist. Running Up That Hill by... <laughs> Kate Bush. Artist. I don't know the artist, but I know it's Running Up That Hill. <laughs> Which pop star had their wedding crashed by their ex this past summer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Alright, alright, hint. Blonde hair. Wow, that's so helpful. It is. I have no idea. Just guess. Just guess. Just guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. Taylor Swift. The only blonde early 2000s person I can think of right now is Taylor Swift. Um, no. Is it Olivia Newton-John? Hank, Britney Spears. Britney Spears? Yes. Yes. Britney Spears? Britney Spears? Yes. <laughs> or give it two out of five. Not bad. Lady <laughs> Gaga. Oh. It's a really good guess. No, it, it's Britney Spears. 
Britney Spears? Yes! Oh, I don't know. <laughs> What's a song? Um, Travis, Hit Me Baby Cir- One More Time. Circus. Um, Hit Me Baby One More Time. So Britney great. Spears? Britney Spears, we're giving them the point. We're giving them the point. <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> well, I guess all. Thank I you guys so much. <laughs> well, that does it for this segment of Backstage Asks. I'm Hannah Bokowski. I am Eric Valenti. And this was fun. Yeah, I think the LaSalle campus held their own. I am really proud of the Explorers this time. Yeah, me as well. So back to the studio. That was super fun to film, and we love getting the LaSalle campus involved with our show. Thanks to everyone who participated in our trivia. If you're a LaSalle student, keep an eye out for us on the quad. Now that we're done with our summer recap, let's get into the stuff that's happening now. Something that I want to bring up is the Leonardo DiCaprio controversy. If you haven't seen or heard, Leonardo DiCaprio has recently broken up with his girlfriend, Camila Marone, after four years of dating. Camila is 25 years old and Leonardo is 47 years old. However, Camila is another point on the Leonardo dating age graph. Leonardo seems to be unable to have a girlfriend older than 25 years old and seems to break up with them before or as soon as they turn 25. Still don't believe me? Here's the list of women he screwed over in 2004. <laughs> screwed over. In 2004, Leonardo broke up with Giselle Bunchen when she was 23 years old. Then in 2010, he broke up with Bar Raffelli when she was 25. In 2011, he broke up with Blake Lively when she was 23. In 2012, he broke up with Aaron Heatherton when she was 22. He broke up with Tony Garn in 2014 when she was 21. In 2015, he broke up with Kelly Rortback when she was 25. In 2017, he broke up with Nina Agdal when she was 25. And now this with Camila. Camila stated that she is doing fine after the breakup and Leonardo seems to have his sights set on dating Gigi Hadid. Though Gigi is 27, it would make her one of the oldest spouses of DiCaprio. Maybe he's getting his sights on her so he can break the theories and rumors about his dating preferences. I find this both fascinating and hilarious. Eric, I only have four years left. We need to get my resume to Mr. DeCat before I turn 25. But as much as I love Leo DiCaprio stuff, it pales in comparison to what I'm about to talk about. So buckle up, because this is a major drama alert. You might have heard of this little movie called Don't Worry Darling, directed by Olivia Wilde. Where to begin? Let's start with the rumors of Olivia Wilde leaving Jason Sudeikis for Harry Styles at the start of filming for the movie. She claims they weren't dating when she started dating Styles, but other sources seem to think otherwise. I guess we will never know. After the film was introduced at the Venice Film Festival a couple of weeks ago, Fans were confused whether or not Olivia and Harry are still dating, since they did not interact at the event, nor did they sit next to each other. Weird. But that's not all. Miss Olivia also has some drama with the actors in her film. Before Styles was cast, Shia LaBeouf was set to play the lead male in the film. However, Wilde claimed that she fired LaBeouf because of his acting process that, quote, seems to require a combative energy. LaBeouf clapped back with evidence of emails shared between them, saying, I quit your film because you're actors, and I couldn't find time to rehearse. Apparently, the lead actress of the film, Florence Pugh, had concerns about working with LaBeouf. In the emails LaBeouf leaked, Olivia Wilde said that she didn't want to give up on him and that, quote, this might be a wake-up call for Miss Flo, a.k.a. Florence Pugh. It's rumored that Pugh and Wilde have had several disagreements, and not once did they make eye contact during the Venice Film Festival, in which Pugh also limited her press time. Wow, talk about drama. But wait, there's more. There's more? You've got to be kidding me. Yep. To top it all off, after a video surfaced at the Venice Film Festival, it was believed that Harry Styles spat on co-star Chris Pine. The rumors appear to be false as Harry joked that he, quote, went to Venice to spit on Chris Pine. Regardless of all this drama concerning Don't Worry Darling, you can see the film on September 23rd. Well, Darlin, in more positive news, the VMAs happened a few weeks ago and we have the recap if you missed it. Here are some of the winners from the VMAs for 2022. Dove Cameron won New Artist. Honestly, not familiar with her music. Bad Bunny won Artist of the Year. I knew a few of his songs, but not sure if he deserved Artist of the Year. Billie Eilish won Song of the Year for her song Happier Than Ever. I love that song. 
I thought it was older. Harry Styles won best pop for his song, As It Was. This just made Hannah happy, let's be honest. Yes, very happy. BTS won group of the year. Honestly, not surprised. Everyone seems to roll on the floor for BTS. Taylor Swift won video of the year for her 10 minute version of All Too Well. I'm surprised. I was only able to sit through two minutes of it and then skip to the end. I don't believe that the judges watched the video all the way through. And I'd cover all the rest, but we would be here forever. Well, I love music. Let's talk TV, shall we? On Monday night, the world of television highlighted the best of the best. Here are some of the winners from the 2022 Emmys. Outstanding comedy series went to Ted Lasso. Honestly, Backstage Pass was robbed. Eric and I will be waiting for the recount. Hashtag justice for Backstage Pass. Outstanding drama series went to some random show I've never heard of called Succession. I think it should have gone to Squid Game, but what do I know? Outstanding television movie went to Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers. This is just so funny to me. Television gold, am I right? Outstanding limited or anthology series went to The White Lotus. I have no idea what the hell that is. Can I say hell? Okay, well, anyways. Outstanding variety sketch series went to SNL. I mean, who doesn't love SNL? I guess a lot of people, but I think it's I. <laughs> An outstanding unstructured structured reality program went to Love on the Spectrum US. I've seen parts of the show, but I don't have much of an opinion on it, so congrats. We don't have time to review all the winners, but make sure to check out the actors and actresses who won because the acceptance speeches were so good. Hmm. Though I love the Emmys, there are just some things in this world that Hannah and I love more, just a bit more. To talk about these new special things, we introduce a new segment we'd like to call Our, Our new, new Obsessions. obsessions. <laughs> in this segment, we have three categories that we will be obsessing over. First things first, I'm the realist. Hannah, shut up. Okay, it's video <laughs> games. More specifically, Animal Crossing. The Nintendo Switch title, Animal Crossing New Horizons, which was released on March 20th of 2020. It still holds its own two years later. But just what can you do in this game? Not only can you design your own house, but you can design your own island. Talk about creating your own paradise. You can also terraform your island, populate your island with adorable animal villagers, and decorate your island to your heart's content with vegetation and furniture. Designing doesn't stop there with the addition of the DLC called Happy Homes Paradise, which was released on November 5th of 2021. Purchasing this DLC allows you to design vacation homes for other villagers on other islands. There's a limit of 10 villagers on your own island, so things are almost limitless with this DLC. Our next category is music. Personally, I have been listening to Have You Ever Seen the Rain by Creedence Clearwater Revival on repeat. It was released in 1968, so yes, it's a bit older, but it's still worth a listen. What song are you obsessed with, Eric? Personally, I have been obsessed with Flip Turn's Weepy Woman. Flip Turn is an indie band who released their album Shadow Glow a few weeks ago. Definitely check them out and you'll be obsessed in no time. LOL, never heard of them. So our last category is TV. Do you have a show that you're currently binge watching? For the millionth time, I am watching New Girl, which is just a feel-good show about a quirky girl. The plot is different every episode, and I think it's pretty similar to Friends, since it's about a bunch of roommates. What can I say? I'm a sucker for sitcoms. I, too, am a sucker for sitcoms. So after a long time of not being able to watch my favorite show, That 70s Show, since it was taken off Netflix, the streaming service Peacock gained the rights to the stream of the show. So naturally, I've been binging that. But I've also been watching The Sopranos with my boyfriend, and we're almost done with the series, and it makes me sad. So I really just want to like talk about Animal Crossing first. <laughs> I think that's the thing that like really bonded Hannah and I. It's true. That's how we became best friends. All during like the summer, like the first thing I would do, like in the morning, I would have a cup of coffee and just like design homes. I yeah. No, I've been obsessed with it because I bought a Switch in June after I got my wisdom teeth out because I was sad and I was like, this will make me happy. <laughs> I remember when you were texting me about that. Yeah, I remember it's true. I was like nervous because their Switches are a lot of money. But like Animal Crossing, I know like I have a couple friends who like mm -hmm. bought their Switch just to play Animal Crossing. 
Um, me, that's me. Yeah, that, you. You're like probably it's the number so one. It's so fun, and I got the DLC for my birthday because I play it so much, and I, I love decorating <laughs> little homes. It's like, okay, you know, webkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had webkins. <laughs> it's literally like webkins. webkins. <laughs> it's literally webkins, but better, I think, like 100% better. I think because so. Because it's like more, you know, technologically advanced rather than just like you have one little square mm -hmm. for your house and webkins. I think my but. sister was more into like webkins and stuff and she left her horse like bouncing on a bed for two years and then we logged in and it was still bouncing. I love webkins, but um, how did you find that song that you said you were listening to? Like, Creedence well, Clearwater Revival. Yeah, yeah, you said you were listening to that with your boyfriend. Yeah, or? we were, you know everything about me, I love it. <laughs> we were listening to it in the car and then it was just stuck in my head and that, that's literally the story. <laughs> what about Flip Turn? Who are they? I've been listening to them since I've been listening to Adam Melcher. If you already don't know, I'm obsessed with Adam Melcher. Mm -hmm. And I found them because he like reposted them. And then I kind of followed them a little bit like over time. And just their music is just really chill. And like, I don't think this is their first album, but I think compared to their other albums, this is like Flip Turn's like first really like, they're taking it seriously. Okay. They're doing music. And I just really, I loved the album cover. It was like a red album cover and it looked like it was like oil paints and. It was really pretty. I only said Weepy Woman, but there's like tons of songs on there as well. I wasn't going to do a review for that because no one knows who they are. <laughs> well, do you, that's your job. That is my job. Do, do better. The other thing just that kidding. we both love is New Girl too. Oh yeah. New I, Girl, I've, okay, I've seen that like probably 10 times. At least 10 times. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely super fun, but. You know what makes me sad though? It's the end of our show. I wonder what our viewers thought about our stories, thoughts, and opinions about all the content we covered. I wish there was a place they could connect with us. Luckily you can, through social media. Get your phone out and follow us on these various platforms seen on your screen. Drop us a follow, double tap our posts, leave a comment, and let us know if you have any suggestions. We are already counting down the days to episode two. I'm Hannah Balkowski. And I'm Eric Valenti. We'll see you next time on Backstage Pass.